here at Universal Studios Florida to take you on a full tour of Universal so that way you know where everything is for your next trip here. All right, guys, I am gonna show you every single ride, store, shop, dining option, entertainment, and more here in Universal Studios today. We have made our way into the park. We went past the iconic globe and underneath that classic Universal Studios archway, and we've scanned in. So once you're here, the first thing you're gonna see is on your right, and it's gonna be the on-location cameras, films, and gift store. So this one is pretty simple. This is actually where you're going to find your different uh, universal photos if you're here and you're gonna check out all of those things. They also have some merchandise like hats, different plushes, uh, miscellaneous items, but mainly this is where you're gonna be uh, headed to check out those Universal Studios pictures. All right, so straight across the way from On Location is gonna be Studio Suites. And this is gonna connect to the Universal Studio store as well. But Studio Suites is what you're gonna walk into first. It is a sweet shop with different candies, homemade fudges, caramel apples, all that good jazz. All right, so we are going to continue to kind of walk down towards Production Central. But before we get down there, we're first gonna stop at Universal Studio store, which does connect to Studio Suites. This one is gonna be your one-stop shop for all your main Universal shopping needs. Um, you're going to find stuff like Harry Potter merchandise, Universal merchandise, Jaws, uh, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park. Lots of your general merch is what you're going to find in here. I will also say if you are a Disney fan and you're like a Spirit Jersey fan, we do have Universal versions of those. Quincy and I spend a lot of time in this store. So just something I want to point out because there's a lot of Disney things that I love like lounge flies or Spirit Jerseys that Universal also has if you want some of that merchandise. Universal is like Disney in the sense that they have kind of their lands, uh, but unlike Disney, it is not as clear in my opinion and it's not as talked about. So I will tell you a little bit about what is in each of these lands. And the first one we're getting to is Production Central. So first up in Production Central is Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. It is a ride where you get to join Gru and his daughters and the minions on a crazy, unpredictable virtual reality ride where you actually become a minion yourself. It is pretty crazy. You do need to be at least 40 inches tall to ride this one and if you aren't aware, this one actually makes Quincy cry. So right across from Despicable Me, Menion Mayhem is going to be the new location for the Villain Con Minion Blast ride. It's gonna come sometime this summer, summer 2023, um, and you're gonna get to go to Villain Con with the Minions. And it's based off of those fun Minion movies. This will be a shooting ride. I'm assuming it's going to be something like Men in Black Alien Attack, uh, but we don't know just yet, but you can be sure that all ears is gonna keep you updated. We have made our way to the end of this kind of road right here, and that's gonna bring us to super silly stuff. This is basically just the Despicable Me Ride exit shop, uh, but it's where you're going to find a majority of your Minions merch, your Despicable Me merchandise, and this is also where you're going to find the party at the end of the ride, uh, where you can come party with some Minions. I use the term party loosely, but it is there. Across from Despicable Me Minion Mayhem is Betty Boop. This is the Betty Boop store. You're gonna find a lot of merchandise for this classic character, and it's actually going to lead into the Universal store and the Hello Kitty store. All right, so here we are. This is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Uh, this is where you're going to get to choose your own tunes, your own music, while you ride this crazy adrenaline pumping coaster. It's gonna take you straight up into the sky and you're gonna go about 65 miles per hour. This one's pretty intense, I can't lie to you. You need to be at least 51 inches tall to ride it and you have to put everything in a locker, your cell phone included. It does not matter if you have a fanny pack, unlike other rides, everything must go in that locker. I point this part out about the lockers because this is one of the few rides that you do have to put everything away. Uh, so if you're by yourself, like I have been before, you need to make sure that you have uh, something to think about. You, you're just by yourself. There's nothing to do in this line. I have waited in this line for about an hour by myself and had nothing to think about. If you're with your family and friends, it's really not that bad. Just make sure you have those conversation topics listed off and ready to go. This is also another one of those rides that if you're concerned, uh, because it does not fit every single body, you can come test the ride vehicle before you get in line. So right outside of the entrance for the Rip Ride Rocket is this nice little seating area uh, in front of the stage. They will do specialty concerts here sometimes, live entertainment depending on the time of year or if there's just special events going on. But a lot of times people will use this for a nice shaded kind of sitting and chilling area, which is one of my favorite places to do that. We are gonna head around the construction for the Minion Blast game. And we're gonna head straight down this row because technically this is what finishes up Production Central. 
So first we're gonna walk past the Park Plaza Holiday Shop. Uh, this is just their year-round Christmas shop here, where if you're looking for those ornaments or anything super Christmassy, you're gonna head here. Okay, so we're headed out of the Christmas shop, and uh, Universal actually does have a lot of facades that aren't necessarily anything. Uh, so right here they have, this is a great example of a facade that maybe at some point was something, but currently is not. So if you see me walking past a lot of buildings, and you're like, why is she skipping that? That's probably why. So next up right here is the Film Vault. Uh, this is where you're gonna find motion picture memorabilia. I think this one is very cute, but I am kind of a movie nerd. So I think it's just good one-stop shop for movie memorabilia. So right across from the Film Vault is actually going to be Transformers The Ride 3. D. So this one's pretty cool. Uh, be aware of motion sickness on this one. I traditionally am not someone who does get motion sick, but this has gotten me in the past. Uh, and this is a ride where you get to board a nest vehicle and you get to help Optimus Prime and Bumblebee save the Earth. You do need to be at least 40 inches tall to ride this one. And again, be aware of that motion sickness factor. So then wrapped around to the other side of the building is going to be Supply Vault. This is going to be your Transformers exit shop and also where you're going to find a lot of your Transformers merchandise. New York is going to be that next area of the park that we talked about. You know, they have their little areas and New York is one of them. First thing you're going to get to when you get to New York is the Tonight Shop. This is going to be the exit shop for the Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon ride where you're going to find a lot of generic Universal merchandise but also the Tonight Show merchandise and Jimmy Fallon merchandise. So now that we've been through the shop, we might as well talk about the ride, right? This is where you're gonna find Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. And it's exactly like the name. You're gonna race through New York against Jimmy Fallon on something called the Tonight Rider. And you're gonna see a lot of references to his famous late night talk show. It's very cute. Uh, this is Quincy's personal enemy. She absolutely despises this ride because if you wanna talk about nausea inducing, this is gonna be the ride for you. You do need to be at least 40 inches tall to enjoy this one. Uh, and again, this one you do need to be really aware of motion sickness. One thing I want to point out for Race Through New York um, is this entire facade is considered part of the ride. Down here to the left is where you're gonna get in that virtual line return and the express entry. But then down here to the right is where you're going to enter for standby. That one just threw me off when I first started coming to Universal because I didn't realize it was two different entrances uh, for the same ride, but it is. This area that we are walking through now is going to be a little bit of everything. Right now, this is where you're going to be able to find things like Marilyn and the Diamond Bells. This is where you're going to see Marilyn Monroe uh, in a live show with her backup dancers. Marilyn and her backup dancers are actually going to uh, perform songs like Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend and uh, Christina Aguilera's Candyman. You can also meet and greet with Marilyn and her Diamond Bellas here. Also, before we go too far, I just want to show you this facade right here, this building. This is where you're going to be able to find Universal's Tribute Store. So it is not currently open while I am here, but if you are here during the holiday tributes or during the Halloween Horror Nights, this is where you're going to find a lot of festive fun. They're going to have some really fun photo opportunities as well as merchandise and specific treats for those events. So right here is where you're going to find Revenge of the Mummy. This is an indoor dark roller coaster that is tons of fun that rushes you forward and backwards as you're fleeing from an evil mummy. You need to be at least 48 inches tall to ride this one. This one is a little bit scary. I don't know what I thought it was when I had forgotten because it had been closed for a little bit for refurbishment, but it's tons of fun. But definitely be aware that uh, if you have younger kiddos, this one might be a little bit more intense. And also these guys are out here, which is terrifying. <laughs> so directly across the street from Revenge of the Mummy is actually Finnegan's Bar and Grill. This is going to be a traditional Irish American pub that has lively bar music and also is a full service restaurant. It's going to have authentic Irish dishes like bangers and mash, shepherd's pie, and a Guinness beef stew. So as we're finishing up next to Finnegan's, uh, I want to point out this area right here, this street. Next to it is an Annie Ann's, which is actually just the hand-rolled pretzels with pretzels, hot dogs, and soft drinks, which I'm obsessed with. Um, but right next to that is where you can find the Blues Brothers. So this is going to be the Blues Brothers show. It's a live show attraction here at Universal, and it stars the Blues Brothers from the 1980 film where they do some songs and they talk to the crowd. Again, this is very similar to the Maryland experience. They are not here all of the time, but you can check the Universal app to see what times they'll be out and performing.
So across the street next to Revenge of the Mummy is going to be the Sahara Traders. This is going to be mainly your exit queue for Revenge of the Mummy. Uh, this is where you're going to be coming out when you finish that ride. And this is also where you're going to find a lot of that mummy merchandise. So heading down the street here, um, this is also going to be another one of those pop-up show areas where you're going to find things like Sing It. That's where you're going to find acapella singers who are battling out to see who is the best. Again, very similar to the Blues Brothers in Maryland. Look for those times in the app as they do change. Right next to where you're going to find all of these shows, you're also going to find the Palace Arcade. This is where you can go in if you're looking to get out of the sun or your kiddos are wanting to play some games. It's an arcade. It's nothing super special or super universal specific. I think it's helpful if <laughs> wait times are pretty high and you just need a place to kill time. So as we wrap up in the New York area, there's only a few more buildings that we need to chat about. And one of them is right here, and it's actually haagen -Dazs. Uh, it kind of looks unsuspecting in my opinion, but this is the ice cream shop. It's haagen ice cream, nothing super specialty. Uh, I would recommend getting, if you want ice cream, I would recommend heading into the Wizarding World, which we'll chat about in just a minute. But if you're just looking for something comforting and familiar, haagen is gonna be your place to go. Across the street from haagen and Annie Ann's is gonna be Rosie's Irish Shop. This is an Irish themed shop that has different apparel and keepsakes to honor your Irish heritage and maybe some Guinness apparel or two. Continuing down, you are going to find Louis Italian restaurant and also Louis Bar and Grill. If you're looking for the facade, it says Bar and Grill, but it's Louis Italian restaurant. So Louis Italian restaurant has Italian favorites like pizzas, pastas, meatballs, subs, and salads. Plus they have creamy gelato and Italian ice. If you are not looking to do a full sit down at Louis, there is a walk up bar where you can get gelato and then a few things of pizza and different sodas as well. All right, for our last stop in New York, it's only appropriate that it's a Starbucks. So this is where you're gonna find the resident Starbucks here in Universal. It is right across from Louis at the very end of this row here. And it's, it, it, that's all it is. It is a Starbucks. This is where you're gonna find coffees, teas, and pastries. The lines can get pretty crazy. And Universal is similar to Disney in the sense that they have other specialty coffees around the park. But if you know you like Starbucks, this is where you're gonna head. So now that we've finished up the big city of New York, I'm headed to San Francisco. I'm gonna show you everything here. And the first thing we're gonna run into is the Beat Builders. So they aren't performing right now, but the Beat Builders are four construction workers who help progress on Universal's latest improvement project, and they put on a percussion show. It's kinda crazy, it's kinda funny, and honestly, it always makes me giggle. Directly across from the Beat Builders is where you're gonna find Fast and Furious Supercharged. And that's the coolest thing about this ride is the name. This is gonna be a motion simulator ride based on the action movies Fast and Furious. And they even recreated some of the sets and there's a virtual street chase. You need to be at least 40 inches tall to ride this one. And I will warn you, this is probably, I hate to say it, one of the worst rides I've ever been on. I'm sorry, Fast and Furious. Quincy tricked me, told, it, told me it was amazing. So maybe my expectations were just too high, but uh, this one, Kind of a letdown. Wouldn't recommend waiting for this one for too long of time. So we are continuing down San Francisco and I will also warn you this is one of the shortest parts that we're going to talk about today. This is going to be one of the smallest quote unquote lands um, but we're going to head to Richard's Burger Co. So right here on the water is Richard's Burger Co. This is a counter service eatery that offers standard fast food options and beer in a warehouse like space. So if you're looking for a good burger and beer, this is going to be a pretty good place to stop. So right next to the Burger Co. and kind of connected to it is actually the San Francisco Candy Factory. This is where you're going to find things like caramel apples, homemade fudge, and cinnamon roasted nuts. Lots of good sweets. So right next to the candy factory is kind of tucked behind this construction is going to be Shea Alcatraz. This is a walk-up bar here in Universal uh, where you just have mixed drinks, beers, alcoholic drinks, and a handful of snacks. But this is mainly going to operate as a walk-up bar. All right, so as you continue down the walkway, you're going to go past this crazy raging party. Um, this is the party that if you ride Fast and Furious Supercharged, this is the party they're referencing. This place is bumping. While I might be giggling about the party, the reason I'm back here is to show you the Fast and Furious Supercharged store. So this is gonna be the exit store that you walk through after you finish the ride. And this is where you're gonna find a lot of the Fast and Furious merchandise. I will say this merchandise is not as um, frequent. You're not gonna find this one as much. So if you want Fast and Furious merchandise, this is gonna be the best place for you to stop and check that out. 
So here on the water next to these actually beautiful boats is going to be Lombard Seafood Grill. This is Universal's actually flagship restaurant, if you didn't know. Um, it's a fish restaurant that has an enormous aquarium, and it's a recreation of the Fisherman's Wharf. If you are looking for a nicer sit-down option, this is going to be a great one. They're going to have lots of fish and even some fillets. Uh, they have hamburgers if you're curious, but if you're looking for fish, this is going to be a good option. Finally, wrapping up here in San Francisco, we are going to find the San Francisco Pastry Company. This is a cozy little cafe that is situated right here on Lombard's Landing. It's going to serve a variety of baked goods and sandwiches, beers, wine, coffees, and breakfast actually until 11. So if things are getting pretty crazy in the wizarding world, but you want something quick and easy, this is going to be a great spot to head to. Okay, so we have somehow managed in just a matter of seconds to go from San Francisco to London. And you might not realize it yet, but also the wizarding world of Harry Potter. So the first thing you get to when you're here in London is going to be the Hogwarts Express, the King's Cross Station. This is a park-to-park -park admission ticket required attraction, so you do need to be able to park hop between the two. Um, and it's a train ride from London to Hogsmeade. This one is really special for Harry Potter fans because this is how he gets to um, Hogwarts in the books and in the movies. So people definitely prefer to go this way. The wait time for this one can get pretty crazy, and I will say Quincy's going to talk about it over in her video. It's pretty much the same train ride from Hogsmeade back here to London. So maybe save yourself the wait time and try it that way. We're going to pass this fun telephone booth. I'm not going to hop in there because there's a little bit of a line. But pro tip, head in there and maybe, maybe uh, type in certain numbers that eventually would spell magic. And maybe something will happen. Also, we are going to head through this nondescript tunnel that has nothing to do and is nothing special. Yep, nothing to see here. Everything just normal and casual oh my gosh what is this all right so we did it we made it to Diagon Alley this is where you're going to find the main things of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter here in this park this is absolutely my favorite part of Universal and I am so excited to talk about it so the first thing you're going to find is here on the left, it is actually the Leaky Cauldron. The Leaky Cauldron is where you're going to find a lot of traditional English fare here in the Wizarding World. They do do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and this is on their mobile order as well if you want to look into saving some time. This is going to be the main sit-down quick service here. So pro tip, if you're waiting to see her uh, breathe a little fire, get a little angry, she does it every 10 minutes on the 10. And it's 1.50 now, so it should be soon. So the first store we're actually going to come to is here on the left. It is Madame Malkin's. They're the supplier of uniforms to Hogwarts students. Let's head inside. So it is a little bit dark in here, but this is where you're going to find your Hogwarts robes, if that's something you're into. You can find them multiple places throughout the Wizarding World, but this is going to be a good place to check that out and maybe even see like a magical mirror or two. I don't know. We'll have to check. So across the way from the madams, you're going to find Ollivanders. So this is where you're going to be able to come find those interactive wands and maybe even see an experience where someone is chosen to be a wizard, where their wand chooses them. I have actually personally been able to have that experience. So if you want to go check out the Do Everything Harry Potter video that Quincy and I did, you can go see what that experience looks like and maybe see me in it. Now I will say you can find the interactive wands here. You can also find the character wands and just some regular wands. Uh, right now it's actually pretty quiet, which is surprising. They must be doing a show right now. But this store can get crazy, crazy busy. And this is not the only place you can get wands here. So if you're looking to avoid maybe the crazy crowds, keep your eyes peeled for wand carts throughout the land and not just here in Ollivander's. Okay, we're going to walk past the Ollivander's uh, opening, and that is going to bring us to kind of an impasse. We could go right or left, and eventually I'm going to tell you all about Gringotts Bank here, but first we're going to go to the left so we don't miss any of this crazy fun over here. So the first thing you're going to find, it's here on the left, if you're headed towards the dragon, is going to be Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. So this is the parlor that serves up some really unique ice cream flavors, and even some flavors from the book. This is soft serve and hard pack ice cream. 
And in my opinion, if you're getting ice cream at Universal, this is where you should come. This is some of the best ice cream I personally have ever had. Can't deny it. Directly across the street from the ice cream parlor is going to be the Magical Menagerie. This is where you're gonna go find your, your magical pets, your special friends. So just like Harry, everybody can bring their own magical animal uh, to Hogwarts, and you are no different. So if you're looking to grab a fun little pet like a Crookshanks or a Hedwig, this is gonna be your one-stop shop for that. So heading out of the menagerie and past Florian Fortescue's, you're gonna find the Fountain of Fair Fortune. So here at the Fountain of Fair Fortune, this is where you're going to find a tavern inspired by the Harry Potter books that serves up different beers and non-alcoholic beverages like butterbeer. You can also get pumpkin juice on tap here, which I highly recommend. Uh, I don't like pumpkin juice in the bottle, but I love it on tap. So while it might look like we've come to the end of the line, we certainly have not, because there's magic about, you guys. So what else do we have to do but check out Nocturne Alley? So it's a little bit harder to see, but Nocturne Alley is the area where all of the bad witches and wizards go. This is where you're going to find some of those dark arts related merchandise items, and you're able to do some special magic down here. Also down here in Nocturne Alley is where you're going to be able to find those special dark arts uh, related items. If you're into that kind of thing, if you're a Draco Malfoy girl like myself, this is actually where when Quincy and I were here last time, she bought her dark arts fanny pack that she literally has on today while she's filming her tour um, in Islands of Adventure, which you can go check out on the channel. All right, so that was it, Nocturne Alley. So if you are looking for some shady wizard deals, that's the place to go. Also, it is a very small section of the wizarding world here. Uh, it won't take you too long to head through there. Luckily, it brings us right back out here to this beautiful girl. So we are gonna head back down this row and then go right instead of left. So here it is, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. This is actually one of my favorite rides in Universal. It's an indoor coaster that takes you through Gringotts Bank where you're gonna see some familiar faces along the way. Maybe Harry Potter, maybe Hermione Granger, maybe Ron Weasley, but I don't wanna give it away. So this is the exit shop you're going to head off of when you get through Escape from Gringotts. You're gonna find a lot of the Hogwarts houses merchandise in here. And frankly, I just think it's a beautiful store. Thank you. All right, so here it is. This is Gringotts Money Exchange where you can exchange your muggle currency for some Gringotts banknotes that you can use throughout the Wizarding World. And also there's amazing animatronics in here that will talk to you. I think even if you don't necessarily don't go for the money exchange aspect of it, which you can use, so it's just kind of a fun souvenir or just a fun experience, you should go inside to check out the awesome animatronic. Right next to uh, the Gringotts Money Exchange is the Eternals Elixir Refreshments. So this is where you're going to find fun little additions that you can add uh, to your water, to your gilly water. It's fun potions. They add different flavors and things. Quincy and I both have tried it before. It is not my favorite, uh, but if you're looking for something fun and healthier than a lot of sugary drinks, this is a great option. This stage where I just frantically ran to show you Celestina is actually going to be a spot for a few different shows here in the Wizarding World. First is Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees, who we just got to kind of get a glimpse at. This is actually Molly Weasley's favorite singer in the books, and you're gonna hear a lot of fun swinging songs like a cauldron full of hot, strong love, and you stole my cauldron, but you can't have my heart. That one's actually my favorite. This is also the same area where you're gonna find the stage show that tells you the tale of one of the two wizard fables that they talk about in the Deathly Hallows, which is the Three Brothers. This one is really such an amazing story. It is incredible. I think the puppeteering that they use in this story actually really blows me away. And fun fact, the man who created the puppets for this show also created puppets for Broadway's The Lion King and Finding Nemo the Musical. So heading back across the stage, you're going to find the Globus Mundi store. This is a facade for travel agencies, but this is actually one of Quincy's favorite stores. Can you tell she and I spend a lot of time here together? Um, and you're gonna find a lot of kind of normal Harry Potter merchandise, but then also some specialty items. So right past the performance stage and outside of the store, you're going to find the Hopping Pot. This is going to be a walk-up bar here in the Wizarding World where you can grab things like butterbeer, uh, pumpkin juice, and specialty beers that you can only get in this part of the Wizarding World. You can also grab a few small snacks here as well. 
All right, so that's gonna bring us around to Sugar Plum Sweet Shop. This is going to be the stop uh, where you can get your, your sweet treats here in the Wizarding World. So they do have a store over in Hogsmeade with all of the exact same uh, delicious items. So if you're missing those and you're not gonna be in this park, you can think about that. Uh, they have different fudge, the specific candies, chocolate frogs, cupcakes, lots of really fun and exciting things. I will say these are not my favorite options when it comes to treats in the Wizarding World, but a decent option if you're looking for that. So heading out of the sweet shop, you can actually pass one of the beer and ice cream carts here if you're looking for something cold and refreshing but you're not really wanting to wait in long lines. Next to the cart, you can find the wands shop here. This is another great example of if you want one of those cool interactive character wands, you can find them here without having to go through the craziness that is Ollivander's. So this is it, we are wrapping up on our stop. We are we have made a full circle back to the leaky cauldron, back towards the front, but there is still one more shop that you absolutely have to see while you're here. That shop is gonna be Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Please try saying that five times fast. It is crazy. This is gonna be the shop that Fred and George own in the movies and the books. You're gonna find some funny treats, some different uh, little items here. It's, it's pretty, Nondescript. There's lots of different things that you can find in the books, like beaver fudge, fainting fancies. You can even find little love potion bags here. Um, lots of little miscellaneous items. And then finally, the store that the Weasleys connects to is the Quality Quidditch Supply Store. You're going to find lots of Hogwarts house-specific items in here, some uh, Quidditch items, and it does connect to the Weasley shop, so you don't necessarily have to walk outside and inside like I did, but just want to show you guys the facades. So a directly across from the exit from Diagon Alley is going to be the night bus. So there's a few things about this that I think are really cool. And one of them is that this is a triple decker purple Regent bus. What I think is really cool though, is this is one of the two actual prop buses that was used in the film. And it just sits out here in the theme park. That is crazy. Passerbys can look in the windows and see the curtains, the beds, the chandeliers, and you can even talk to a shrunken head that occasionally will converse with the bus conductor. Hi, how are you guys today? We're not good. Not good? No. Tough morning? Very tough. What's going on? Well, our driver left. Oh. And now our navigator's gone to sleep. Oh, okay. So that is a little tough. It, it's rough for me. Yeah. Well, if you're the night bus, does he have to sleep during the day so he can drive at night? Common misconception. Oh. We operate day and night. Oh, well, that's on me, you know? Well, we're the night, like, K and K and I. And I. Fair. Like oh, because you're the knight in shining armor. Exactly. There you go. Well, you go. hopefully he wakes up. Yeah. You know, hope the day gets a little better. Hope so. Hope the driver comes back. You need yeah. a ride somewhere? Uh, might later. But later I'll come on. when and he's awake. I'll come back. Check it out. Good you know. Idea. Good idea. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. So here is our last stop in London, and it is the bake potato walk-up window there's really not like an official name for it per se but this is where you're going to get some really fancy nice loaded baked potatoes and this is my favorite place i'm actually fighting myself not to get something so it might seem a little weird to eat a loaded baked potato in a theme park but my goodness is this one worth it so you have you can get a hot dog but you can also get a jacket potato with beans broccoli and cheese or even a shepherd's pie jacket potato and oh my goodness you guys you also might need to keep your eyes peeled for a creature or two at Grimmauld Place here across from the Jack of Potato stand. All right, so we are making our way into the next land, quote unquote, it's more like an area, uh, and it's World Expo. So really the only thing here in World Expo is going to be the Men in Black Alien Attack shooting game. This is where you're gonna see if you have what it takes to become a man and black. And this is a daring shooting game. It's really more of a trial, uh, but then things go crazy and New York gets overtaken by aliens. And I have to admit, this is the worst I am at shooting games. This is going to be the shop that you exit through after you defeat some aliens in New York. There is actually not a ton of men in black merchandise, but if you keep your eyes peeled, there's some really neat DC and Marvel merchandise that you're not gonna find everywhere else in the park. So currently uh, Universal is undergoing quite a bit of change, just a little bit of construction, and that's gonna show here, so just bear with me. Um, Springfield, USA, the first thing you're going to get to here is the Simpsons ride. This is where you're gonna go in a crazy virtual reality simulator on a crazy trip through Krusty Land. And because it's the Simpsons, things get, well, 
crazy. And that's just the best way to put it. Things go awry, all right, you guys? But you're gonna see all of your favorites in The Simpsons Family, Lisa, Bart, and of course, Homer. One thing to note about um, Springfield is there's lots of little carnival games kind of spread throughout it. If you guys are looking for another activity to do or something to keep your kiddos kind of distracted, this is their version of Dino Land USA, if you will. You also can find this hot dogs uh, stand. Again, it's just hot dogs. You can get turkey legs uh, and then some chips, but kind of more carnival food here at the hot dog stand. So right next to the hot dog stand is the Kang and Kodos Twirl and Hurl. This is kind of their Dumbo ride here. It is a high flying ride over top of Springfield. And you get to see more of your favorite characters like Homer and Lisa and Bart and even Marge. So right across from the Twirl and Hurl is going to be the Quickie Mart. I, ha I hesitated, but that's the name. It's Quickie Mart. This is where you're going to find a lot of your Simpsons merchandise. Uh, this is not the only place in the park, but this is going to be the most heavily concentrated. So after you leave Quickie Mart, you're going to run into the Duff Brewery. This is where you're going to grab an icy cold glass of Homer's favorite kind of suds, and you get to relax in the open air Duff Brewery beer garden. Across the street from the brewery is actually what Universal refers to as Fast Food Boulevard. This is where you're going to find Cletus's Chicken Shack, Moe's, The Flying Dutchman, um, Luigi's Pizza, and Lisa's Treehouse of Horrors. It's basically lots of just different quick services uh, where you get a few different options. One of the restaurants on the boulevard is Moe's Tavern, which is Homer's favorite pub where you can enjoy a real-life Duff beer and even try the flaming Moe's, which is pretty famous in the world of The Simpsons. Also down the boulevard is going to be Lard Lad's Donuts and Ice Cream. This is where you can get those famous pink donuts, and let me tell you, I've personally had them. They are so good. Not only can you get donuts here, but you can get an array of ice creams and different things. It is a pretty popular stop, and the line won't always look this way, so if it does, maybe come back later. So I've mentioned that I am looking to try some new things, and this is what I've had my heart set on today, the Bumblebee Man taco truck. I've heard this one's pretty good, so we're gonna go try some now. Okay, so I got the carne asada tacos, uh, and it comes with two flour tacos with some chips and salsa, and it was like $12 and change. It smells amazing. I think this changed my life. I truly, I'm, I'm gonna be really dead serious with you guys, really honest. When I was walking past the loaded uh, potato stand, I was pretty upset because I was like, oh, this is what I want today. This is what I want to eat. And I wasn't gonna let myself get it. And I was like, I'll just try the tacos. I've heard they're good. This is wonderful. I will crave these. I will get these again for theme park carne asada tacos. Are they crazy special? No, but are they well made for theme park food? Yes. So the area we are entering now is technically what is known as Kid Zone, although Kid Zone kind of closed. So in January 2023, Kid Zone closed permanently to make way for some new additions here in Universal, but not everything is gone. And one of the things that is still open and available is the Animal Actors on Location show. So this is a really cute show where they show you a lot about how animals in movies and films are trained and how they interact and it's pretty cool. They do about five shows a day, but that's another one of those things that you can check in the Universal app to check for specific times. So in case you aren't 100% aware, uh, Kid Zone was previously where you could find things like Woody's Woodpecker Coaster and where you could meet Shrek and Donkey for a brief time. You can see where they've covered up some of it. What you can still find back here is SpongeBob Store Pants, which is the store where you can find lots of SpongeBob merchandise and even sometimes a SpongeBob and Patrick meet and greet. We're gonna head now and check it out. So there he is, Patrick Star. That's crazy. Oh, and Squidward. Also, he waved. Oh, okay. So back here in this crazy cramped corner right now is going to be ET Adventure. This is one of the other things that you can still find here in Kid Zone. This is where you're going to go help E.T. go back to his home planet because it's dying. This one is actually a ride that is older than I am. It's been here since the early 90s and Steven Spielberg personally had a hand in it. Uh, and then right next to E.T.'s adventure is the E.T. toy closet where you can find lots of E.T. merchandise. This is also going to function as the execute for the E.T. adventure ride. Personally, uh, when I'm in Universal, this is one of the only areas that I do see E.T. merchandise. So if this is what you're looking for, even if you don't go on the ride, which you should, this is where you're going to find that. 
So in the past, Kid Zone is also where you could meet several of your favorite DreamWorks and Universal characters. They have moved that to right out here next to Kid Zone Pizza Company, which is currently closed. That is just temporary. They do plan on opening that back up before they do the rest of the area from what I have read online, but there is no confirmation for that just yet. So again, keep following all ears. We'll let you know. So this is where you're going to find those meet and greets. Right now they have Puss in Boots and Kitty Soft Paws out, but they will do other DreamWorks and Universal characters if you keep your eyes peeled. But since I closed Kids Gone, this is where you're gonna head now if your kiddos wants to meet some characters. So here is Cafe La Bamba, Hollywood's original restaurant. Um, you're gonna find this here on the corner of Hollywood and you're gonna find things like burritos, tacos, uh, different bowls and desserts. You can mobile order here and it is considered a walk-up. Also right behind it is going to be the Central Park Crepes. This is where you can get pork carnitas or even smoked brisket or some sweet and savory crepes and it just frankly smells amazing. There goes the Blues Brothers if you're curious. Just roaming in their car. So one of the first things you are going to come up on when you are walking this way is going to be the character zone. So this is another place that they've moved those characters. Now the kid zone has kind of changed up a little bit and you're going to be able to see people like Poppy from Trolls and Branch. I actually love Trolls so this makes me really laugh. Um, but they're here and then also they'll do some fun random meet and greets further down. Spongebob and Patrick are over here to the left. So here on the corner of Hollywood is the Universal Orlando Horror Makeup Show. This is a show where some of the top makeup artists show you how any creepy crawly villains or you know horror makeup is done for the big screen for the movies. I will say I remember watching this show vividly the first time I ever came to Universal. I was a little bit older um, but I loved that's Beetlejuice. Oh my god, okay. I was a little bit older, uh, but it was amazing. And also they make a joke that you're not old, you're classic. And so now we keep telling my grandparents my whole life that they're just classic. And also Beetlejuice, character zone, baby. So across the street from the horror makeup show is actually Mel's Drive-In. So Mel's Drive-In is a quick service here in Universal and it's gonna have your classic uh, diner, drive-ins and dives kind of vibe. It's gonna have hamburgers, french fries, milkshakes, all the good favorites from drive-ins from back in the day. This is actually one of my favorites. I just enjoy the vibes and a good cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers are probably my favorite food, so you'll find me here a lot. So here's another one of those character spots. This is where you can find Homer and Marge and the rest of the Simpsons. They are not currently out, but this is their bus, so if you're looking for them, keep your eyes peeled. Okay, so we continue through Hollywood and that's where we're going to find the Five and Dime store. This is going to be a lot of your Hollywood, uh, Jason Bourne Stump Spectacular merchandise, your old Hollywood like Frankenstein and a lot to do with the horror makeup show. You're actually going to walk out of the store after the horror makeup show. So if you check that out, you'll have to walk through here. So if you are a Universal Annual Pass holder, you do get access, access to a lounge. Um, previously it was right here, but they are moving early in 2023 and they are moving to the park next door. So if you're used to coming in Universal Studios, you're gonna wanna head over to Islands of Adventure for that. Schwab's Pharmacy. This is going to be the place where you can come and get some ice cream, some delicious shakes and malt, different ice cold drinks. And it is based off of the iconic pharmacy that once uh, lived over in Hollywood during the big 1930s era of Hollywood. So continuing on with our lovely character spot, right now Shaggy and Velma are actually meeting. You can find a lot of Scooby and his gang throughout this area. Sometimes they'll be parked at different spots down the street, but Hollywood is definitely the place to look for them. And you can also find the mystery machine if you keep your eyes peeled, or if you don't, because it's the brightest thing you'll ever see. So at the end of the street, you're going to find the Born Stuntacular show. This is a show where they show you how the movies do it. Kind of a high-tech stunt show, all based around the fictional character, Jason Bourne. So as Universal is going through quite a few changes, a lot of these stores are just facades right now. Um, they have lots of construction going on, but we can expect sometime in 23 and into 24, lots of changes happening over here. You guys know, because I keep shameless plugging that we're gonna keep you updated. So here to the right, we are going to find the Hello Kitty store. This is where you're gonna find all of your favorite Hello Kitty merch. So if you're in Disney, you can wanna head to Mitsukoshi and Epcot. And then if you're in Universal, she just has her entire own store. 
Okay, so as we finish up our tour through Hollywood, the last thing we are going to come to is here called the Today Cafe. It is based off of the famous morning talk show, The Today Show. Uh, you're gonna be able to find some specialty pastries here, salads, soups, sandwiches, and just have good vibes all around. Also with the Today Cafe, that brings us back to the Universal Studio Store. And that means we did it, we finished it, we did a whole tour. So that's it, that's the entirety of Universal. I really hope that you guys learned a little bit of something. I know that I got to learn at least that I love those carne asada tacos. Life's about journeys, you know? Learning the new things and learning where everything in Universal is. And I hope that we got to do that together today. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now you can go check out my entire tour of Disneyland over on the channel. I'll see you there.